Hey everyone, this is Vembrand, and welcome to a new chapter of Valiant Heart. Alright, uh, in the last chapter, we uh, managed to down the Great Zeppelin. And now we are nine months earlier before Anna left her home in Paris. We got a flying pigeon. This looks like a. Uh, doesn't seem like I can use anything. Oh, let's start with the facts, I guess. <laughs> Germans at the gate. In September 1914, the German advance took them within 20 miles of Paris. Of Paris. The government had already fled to Bordeaux and was expecting Paris to fall. In the north, most of Belgium was occupied. But under the king's command, 75,000 soldiers kept Ypres and Isère out of German hands. Taxi to Marne. September 6 and 7, 1914, General Gallieni requisitioned 630 per Parisian taxis to transport troops rapidly to the Marne. While relatively few soldiers were actually transported, 4,000 in all, 3% of the total number of the men deployed in battle, the impact on the public was huge. The event became a symbol of solidarity for the nation and the Marne counterattack saved Paris from German occupation. I got four items I want to pick up. One of them I can see over there. And that darn bird owes me a key. So I can throw rocks at him. Nice. Oh, there's a little girl. Does she have a daughter? What is this? Inkwell. Ballpoint point. Ballpoint pens were not developed until the 1950s, 60s. So, soldiers use quill and a quill or nib to write letters. Ink was poured into an inkwell, into which, in order to provide enough ink, the quill or nib had to be dipped regularly. So that man is her father. I remember he was on the zeppelin. So let's see what exactly is going on. I can fly above here, man. Oof, I thought it fell. <laughs> now, how the hell did I get that? I think I just need to make it fall. There we go. I'll go pick it up later. So, let's go see what... Oh, okay, maybe it's... Yeah, or maybe it is her daughter. You look familiar. Letter from a Belgian civilian in Paris. Dear parents, we fled to our land before... Uh, to our land before the German advance to take shelter in France with the children. Unfortunately, the German kept coming to a forward and Paris is practically under siege. If Paris falls... We shall return to Liège, your dear daughter, daughter Mathilde. Give me one second. Can I take this down off? Boom. There we go. Because at this hour, I usually get a whole bunch of uh, G chat stuff. Alright. Probably the maid's daughter then. And somebody. Oh. Uh, Oof, jeez. Taxi to the Marne. Paris Parisian taxis are requisitioned. Give me that. Broken watch trap. A watch trap broken by a motor crank handle before battery ignition was developed. Uh, motor cars were start started by cranking a handle. Um... As the engine sparked to life, the operator had to let go of the handle smartly because the crank handle would, now propelled by the engine, would cause nasty accidents. Oh boy. Hello, my good man. Nothing to say? Alright. So I can't you take any taxis then. I'll need a hand crank. I'll need a square crank. Let's put this here. Here's the last 
<laughs> Le Petit Journal, the little journal, the little newspaper. Um, the main source of information was the newspaper. Radio was in their early days based on the tube technology and television did not exist. On top of local and national news, a news station appeared in the newspaper dedicated on the event on the front. Some newspapers also published daily listing of the POWs and war dead. Uh, wait, where was there a crank? Ah. Um. Wait. Can I? I could use a triangle for this. I just don't know what use I have of it for now, so I'll just keep it on. Uh, maybe I need to put water. Yeah. I need a container for that water. Oh. Let's go take care of the girl. Oh, you all right? Okay. That was very dramatic for, uh, <laughs> applying bandages on the girl's knee. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Alright. We got what we need. Now, let's, uh... Take care of that taxi cab. Uh, yes, I'm in control. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I wasn't sure what that meant. <laughs> I always like this song. I don't remember. I don't remember what it's called though. Oh. Ah! Why are, you, why are you staying there? Uh, uh, what the? What the hell are you doing, man? Why are there zigzagging? There's nothing in front. These people don't know how to drive. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, this is going a little bit faster now. <laughs> All right. Ah, there we go. Perfect. September 7th, 1914. Taxis drove all night. Anna was proud to help the soldiers reach the front line. When Anna arrived at her destination, she discovered the horrible truth with her own eyes. God damn it. The Ecotomb. In the first three months of the war... No, the first three months of the war saw especially heavy losses. August 22nd, 1914 was the bloodiest day of the whole war. With casualties, the numbers... With, the, with heavy casualties. The number of wounded were far greater than... Than had been anticipated. And the better military health service struggled to cope with the scale of the conflict. Nurses. Nurses were angels of the Great War, and were generally volunteers recruited by the Red Cross, the Army, or the American ambulances 
to work with long, grueling shift in hospital, both at the front and behind the lines. They played the role of carers, mothers, and confidants. They often featured in soldiers' memoir and were sometimes their sole companion in death. The majority of the were demobilized at the end of the hostilities, and we got six items to get. Anything behind the cabs? No. September 7th, 1914, Marne, France. Oh, somebody needs help. Drink! 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 One, two... Oh. Probably had a uh, dislocated uh, ankle. Or leg. Seven months went by. Driven by compassion, Anna devoted herself, body and soul, to healing the wounded and the sick. Every life saved was another small victory over the war. The conflict, however, raged on. Shrapnel shell remain. Shrapnel shell remains. A shell containing lead bullet. Depending on its setting, the shell might explode on contact with the ground, sending its content flying or in the air for even more destructive results. I'm in in Ypres suddenly. People need help over there. Got three people to save. I'm on it. New di diary is unlocked. September 7, 1914. The situation is horrific here. Yesterday I was in my warm, cozy apartment. Now I'm in the depth of hell. There are so many deads. So many young lives lost. I managed to save one soldier this morning, but there are so many others to tend to. Tomorrow I will try to get closer to the front so I can help those in need. Uh, what? Nineteen fifteen. Carl is alive. I caught sight of him flying a zeppelin heading south. We're looking for him again tomorrow with Anna and Freddy. On a march to Belgium, where this damn regiment is stationed, I'm not alone at last. Oh no, okay, I already said it, read this one. Those freaking shell nearly, nearly did it for me. There's no way I'm giving up so close to my goal. Apparently, their leader is called Von Dorf. I'm going to get him. Everybody else is just pawn in this game, just like me. And this one. This morning in Ypres, Von Dorf made us capture some scientists. The army in is interested in his work, and apparently he'll help Germany in win the war. He seems like a nice fellow, but it's hard to find out anything else about him. Von Dorf is keeping him closely guarded. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my Mar Marie and my little Victor. I haven't been, I haven't seen them for eight months now. I miss them so much. Hmm. Okay, so he needs water. Let's pick up this. Mess tin with hole. Both dishes in this mess tin will have a hole with them. Not hugely practical for eating perhaps, but life-saving for one soldier. The mess tin uh, was worn at, kid at kidney height and the shell exploded. His mess tin slowed down the searing hot shrapnel in flight, which although it wounded the soldier, helped him live for another day. Messins were blackened during using smoke to prevent them from gl glinting in the sunlight. Hmm. So many corpses. Wait, why did I go all the way down here?
We got graves. I'll find you across, my friend. What do you need, my friend? But come on, let me. They're not allowing me to take care of him right now. I'll start with uh, getting water for that guy over there. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some. Ah! Why wasn't there earlier? A letter from a Prussian soldier. My dear daughter, we are making headway to the French countryside. The landscape is beautiful, and I'd much rather, I'd much rather be enjoying it with you than killing people. I think of you all the time. Your father, Wolfgang. So it's uh. So much misery. We'll have to amputate him. Alright, disinfect the wound. Okay, let's start cutting. I pressed too early earlier. And now... Alright, he's okay. Tallow socks. Socks soaked in refined tallow and coated with formal. The most effective way to beat the cold and damp, frostbite, and other ailments. That, at least, was what the advert said had people believe. However effective the socks were, the fifth soldier's best friend was always a nice, dry pair. Uh, okay. Um. Wait, where, what happened to my bottle? Oh, there it is. Alright. For some reason, I need to go outside to take care of that. Got a full bottle and probably the last. Mm. Nurse's manual. The war if it suddenly required a larger medical corp and there was were not enough qualified personnel. So manuals were published and distributed to help volunteer train. The manual provided a whole host of practical solutions to logistical and medical problems at the front, such as how to make a splint, shredders for rifle, and so on. I'm gonna make a stretcher for you, my friend, but first I need to go get a scarf. Make a splint for somebody else. I can make a splint out of this for uh, the man at the other end. For now, I don't have any uh, evident way to make a... Uh... Okay, first though, I'm gonna take the bottle. Take care of the guy that's just nearby. At least he's gonna be feeling better. Drink, my friend. Uh, can he can he use my stick? No, Alpha have to find a splint. So let's go take care of the uh, broken arm man first. All right, maybe I'll find a splint down there after. I'm, oh, the shovel. But first, you. We need to... Oh, only, only one hit? Okay. Ointment. And now let's, uh... Give him a splint. 
superb, I mean. I'm bringing you a splint, my friend. Just wait a moment. There you go, my man. I do have all the items, right? Yeah. So all I have to do is take care of people. Oh, he fell down. Oh, man, it fell in the middle of uh, of the corpse pile. Remove the bullet. Oof. He's almost okay. Oh, I didn't get. I missed two, so I didn't get a pure white uh, bandage. The French officers were talking about Belgium. The German army was about to experiment with a new weapon near Ypres, Anna's hometown. Anna got en route to warn her father about the imminent danger. Reaching the outskirts of the city, Anna was greeted by the screams of sirens. The deadly gas was already here. Alright, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Anna is now in Belgium. And in the next episode, we're gonna have to deal with the chlorine gas again. See you guys next time.